3D is not as scary as it looks, I promise. In just 15 minutes, you will know how to make this product render in Blender. From scratch. My name is Robin, and I'm a 3D designer. My shtick is 3D for graphic design. The world of shapes, text, products. And I'm pumped to be on Bring Your Own Laptop to share my tricks. Well, let's get into the first step. To begin, we'll model the bottle. M model the bottle. <laughs> and we'll do that with a tool you know very well from Photoshop and Illustrator. And that is the Bezier Curve, which we will add using Shift A, Curve, Bezier. And by the way, whenever I do a shortcut, you'll see that down here on the left. Just remember that when I press Control, you press Command if you're on a Mac. So to begin, let's rotate this into a front facing axis by pressing R, Y, 90. That rotates it 90 degrees on the Y axis. And let's just look at it from X by clicking X up here and press tab to go into edit mode. Now let's move this over here using G, move it up to the green line and R to rotate, holding control to snap it. I'll just make that flat. Now let's move this over here and make a kind of base of the bottle shape. And I'll try to get this vertical and press E to extrude it. Let's move that in a little bit. E, Z to move it only on the Z axis and move it up. Move it out a little bit more and in again. And then up to get the neck. Let's add a little bit of a detail here. I can press the single handle here and press S to scale it in. If I want to shrink that and make it less pronounced and then move that up shrink this in as well. I just want a little detail here. Let's move that in, scale it down, just to have somewhere to place the cap, and then move that up again to finish the top of the bottle. Now, when you have the outline of the bottle, there's a very simple command to make that into an actual 3D bottle. And you'll find that down in the modifiers panel. We'll add a modifier and search for screw. It screws on the wrong axis by default. Let's just change that to X and we have ourselves a bottle. Now viewing it in 3D, we can still press tab and start adjusting. And I think the neck should be a little thinner and I wanna move this down a little bit, just refining things a little bit. Now to, to check the polygon count for this, we can go into wireframe view by pressing this ball up here. And you can tell we don't have very many polygons, but if you turn up the steps viewport in the modifier, you can add a bunch of them and we want a lot. I'm going to go for 500. But that only does it in the circular direction going this way. But we still don't have very many going along the bottle. And that we can change in the curve panel. Here in the resolution preview, it's set to 12. But if I turn that up, you can see it starts adding a whole bunch of polygons. I'll go for 100 just to make it real dense. Let's go back to solid view and let's convert this from a curve into an actual editable mesh by right clicking convert to mesh. And now we can no longer edit the curve, but we can now edit each individual polygon, which we can use to if we go to edge select mode and alt click on the top edge, we can press F and close it. And that's going to help with the remeshing later on. And we can also do the same with the bottom edge. This can be a bit tricky to get a hand on. And there, press F to close it. Press tab to go out of edit view. And that is the bottle finished. And now we'll make the dripping ketchup. And to do that, we'll use one of my favorite features in Blender, which is sculpting. See, in, in 3D, you can work with a kind of digital clay, pushing and pulling like an actual sculptor would. And that is how 3D artists get smooth organic shapes. And for this step, this is where you'll want to pull out your digital drawing tablet if you have one, but it's certainly not needed. And to access sculpting, we just press the sculpting tab at the top of the interface. And here in sculpting, let's select the mask tool by pressing M. It's also down there. Turn up the strength and just change the fall off to something that's less smooth, something like sphere. And now using our pen tablet or just the mouse, we can draw directly onto the model. And I want to draw all the places where I want ketchup. So you just left click to draw and you control left click to subtract. And to change the size of the brush, you just press F, move the cursor over and click 
and that's your new size. So I want to cover all the top of the bottle with pure ketchup and all the way down to, I feel like it would go all the way down to here at least before it starts breaking up into little drips. So let's press the X over on the little ball over here to view it from the front and start drawing our first drip. And I want it to go quite far down, maybe to here at this point. So I'll just draw a circle and move over into 3D view and just draw a line going all the way up. It's okay if it's a little bit jagged, we can smooth things out later. And let's just merge that into the top part of the ketchup in a kind of, in a kind of dripping shape. You know how it works. Mine is quite stylized, so I'm not too worried about it being realistic, but I do want a good shape to it. So let's go in here and control click to remove and make it a little bit thinner as it goes down and round it off. And also round this off a little bit more. And that looks pretty globular to me. So I'll just go around the bottle, drawing these shapes using all the same tools that I've shown you. All right, I'm happy with the shape of my mask. I'll go to mask and smoothen the mask, which blurs it out a little bit. And I'll go back and sharpen it, which smooths out the, the jagged edges that I had. And you can do that as many times as you want. The more times you do it, the smoother it'll be. And when you're happy, you can go to mask extract. The default settings are fine. Just press extract. And that'll give us a separate object for the ketchup drips and the bottle. And on the ketchup, we also have a modifier in the modifier panel that was set up for us. And if we shift drag on that to sensitively drag it, we can change the thickness of the ketchup, which is a very good start. But you'll see it's quite harsh. Uh, this doesn't look liquid at all. Let's just start by giving it a thickness that we want, a kind of average thickness, because it'll vary in thickness later, but a kind of average for me, this will depend on your scene size, but it's something like 0.2 here. Now let's go into this little arrow and apply that modifier so that we can start sculpting on it. Now let's go back into sculpt mode using this and start remeshing. To do that, we'll press R on the keyboard, which brings up a grid. And when you start dragging back and forth with a mouse, you'll change the size of the grid. What you want is something like two to three squares for the width of a drip. And then when you have the right size, you'll just press Ctrl R which remeshes the whole mesh, giving it proper geometry. And now we can start smoothing things out. I'll press I to get the inflate brush. And when I drag that across the surface, let's just increase the size of that brush a little bit and drag it over. You'll see it starts to inflate. And if I hold down shift, we switch to the smooth brush. And when I bring that over, it starts smoothing it out. So using a combination of those two brushes, inflate to grow it and smooth to shrink it, I'll just smooth out everything until it looks quite liquid. And also there's another brush that you should know about and that is a G, grab this one. If you want to control the silhouette of the drip, you can use this to grab it and just move it. So I'll touch it and drag and that just moves it around. And you can use that to control the exact shape that you want on the silhouette of the drip. And just moving from the drips and further up the bottle. This is not a very liquid shape. So let's just smooth all that out by holding shift and just running the brush over it. And maybe just dragging up the top a little bit so that it feels like it's flowing over with ketchup. 
And there I'm pretty happy with the shape of my ketchup. Now let's go back into the layout tab for the next step. Okay, let's just take a moment. Appreciate what we've done here. I just had you use three different modeling techniques for one object. Like that's, that's complex and it's dense. And I know that I just wanted to show you all three, but if you've made it this far, honestly, give yourself a pat on the back. And since you're interested in 3D, I'd recommend that you register for Bring Your Own Laptop's 3D Essentials course, taught by me. The link is in the description. Since no one would buy gray ketchup, we have to make it red. We press the ketchup object and go to its material tab, press new, and that gives us a material that we can call ketchup. And we will make that red. We can't see it yet because we're in object view, but using this third ball from the left, that's the material preview ball, we can see the material preview. And that's also good for selecting the second most important slider. You have a lot of sliders here, but we only have to concentrate on two of the most important ones, base color and roughness. Let's turn down roughness until it looks more like ketchup, more glossy. And let's also go down into this object and give it a new material. And that can also be red. And we can leave the roughness as is. I mean, it does kind of look like a plastic bottle. Although this one, I want the ketchup to be a little bit darker. And now it's time for lighting when it starts looking really good. So let's bring the cursor up to the corner of the window until it becomes a plus and just drag open another window. Shift A, add a camera. And in that other window, we'll press the camera button to move that window to that camera. And now I can start moving that camera around and positioning it in a nice looking frame. In that window, I'll uh, press the scroll wheel to move this bar over and select the fourth most ball, which is the rendered view. Now it's currently using the EV renderer. You can see that in the render tab and it's set to EV. EV is great if you're on a lower end computer, but for high end computers, I would use cycles. It does look better, but if cycles is laggy for you, feel free to use EV. I'll turn off the gizmos and the viewport overlays in this window just to get a clean view of the render. And now I'll just add a light. So shift A, light, area, and scale that up. I'll even make it a little bit oblong, I think, and rotate it around. Let's go into its light properties and turn up the power until we can actually see it. I want it to be quite bright. When I can move it over to the side, I'm looking at the highlight here. I want that highlight to be kind of over there somewhere. I'll rotate it again, turn up the brightness, and just move that up until it's no longer intersecting with the ground, which would be unrealistic for a real lamp. A real lamp wouldn't be able to do that, right? And now for this fill light at the edge, you can even go into the world tab. You could select a color here, which would fill it with a color. I do want a kind of a slight warm, warmish one. And I can make that a bit darker so the fill color isn't too bright. But if you do want to separate what you see in the background from what is actually lighting the bottle, you can do that with a little bit of a hack. I'll just open a new window, go to the shader editor in the world. And this is a bit advanced. You don't have to know why it works, just that it works. I'll mix these together with a mix shader node, mix these two shaders, and then add a light path node with camera ray output going into this factor. And now the bottom background node here is what we see, while the top one is what is lighting the model. So I can make the background a nice cream while the side here isn't too bright. But it does look like it's hovering. So let's shift A, add a mesh plane and scale that up into oblivion and go into its object properties, invisibility, and just select shadow catcher. So it's not visible, but it does catch the shadow of the bottle. Though that shadow does seem a bit too prominent for me. So I'll just duplicate that light and move it over and add a little bit of a fill light here. I just want to see that edge kind of like a kick. I want to scale that up a bit. And looking at the side here, I'll have to turn down its strength until it's barely visible. Something like that looks good to me. And once I'm happy with the image, I can render it by going into render, 
render image. And depending on your hardware and the render you've selected, this may take a couple of minutes, but once it is done, you can go to image, save as, and save as your favorite PNG, JPEG, or Targa file. And that's your very own beautiful product shot. Well done. Now you're ready to go work for companies like Apple, Rolex, Ferra- huh? Oh, they're not? Oh, right! Not until you take the full 3D Essentials course on Bring Your Own Laptop. Link is in the description. And of course, subscribe to Bring Your Own Laptop here on YouTube.